beauty professor and you can find my beauty blog at www.beautyprofessor.net. Today I'm excited to share with you a get ready with me morning routine involving both skincare and of course my makeup process in the morning before work. I get up fairly early to an alarm like many of us do every day during the week. I'm always looking for ways to save time on my routine and still walk out of the house feeling polished and ready to face the day. So this is kind of an encapsulation of all the products I've been using recently to achieve that goal. And I'm going to start with bare skin and head all the way back to, of course, the complete look at the end. I hope you enjoy and thanks in advance for watching. For skincare, a large part of my routine involves the usage of a rotation of masks. And I want to discuss four that I've been using frequently. There's the Radical Instant Revitalizing Mask and it is oxygenated so it bubbles up on your face and then the bubbles pop and you remove it. It completely brings glow and refinement to the skin and I use this once a week. I also love the Omoro Vixa Blue Diamond Resurfacing Peel. I've discussed this in other videos as well as blog posts. It's definitely a luxe investment but so worth it beautiful gel like formula that just completely nourishes the skin and you get the greatest glow afterwards as well while we're still in glow territory the tata harper resurfacing mask is excellent for that as well it's all natural for those of you interested in those elements and it goes on basically translucently on the skin you can leave it on 20 to 30 minutes and it uses fruit acids ahas and bhas to completely transform the level of smoothness of your skin. So all three of those work together to kind of do the same thing and I like to mix them up in my routine. I also adore the SK2 Facial Treatment Mask. It's a cloth mask, you place it on your face and just let the extra concentrated Patera Essence just set into your skin. And your skin looks completely refreshed and rejuvenated. Pores are always tighter and more refined. So all four masks have been a great implementation in my skincare routine and I prefer to rotate them for maximum efficacy. In terms of my skincare routine in the morning, I've really been paring things down quite a bit. And I have found that kind of working with a minimum amount of products is giving me maximum efficacy with those key products, as well as saving me some time with the layering of formula. So to get started, I have cleaned my face. This feels wildly counterintuitive because I had makeup on. I just taught all day and now I'm home, but there's no way on earth I would be able to film this video in real time in the morning. It's unrealistic because I'm always in a rush. So I had to just clean my face when I got home so I could film it this afternoon with the light. At any rate, to clean, I love cleansing with the Kogendo Cleansing Spa Water Cloths or I also have a large pump dispenser of the liquid and I just use Sephora cotton pads in my bathroom. It sits on my counter perennially. This cleanser is so effective. I use it morning and night. I find it removes all traces of makeup and in this case, you can see it's done the job. Then I move on to the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence and this is a product that I was using on and off over the last almost a year now and I came back to it recently just like on a very regular basis and my skin has never been better. I find that every time I use this frequently my skin is improved. It's refined, my pores are smaller, it's smoother, it's brighter and just healthier I don't get breakouts. So. I've used quite a bit, luckily I have another bottle on backup, and this is how I like to apply it. I just put a few drops in my palm, and then I touch it to the other palm so that it's equally distributed, and then I just press it into my skin like this. Upon applying the SK2 Facial Treatment Essence, I try to give it about a minute or so to just sink into my pores as that vital first base. And in the meanwhile, if time permits, I throw on some lip balm. Lately, I've been using a lot of the Zellens lip balm. I am absolutely smitten with the whole Zellens line, both skincare and, of course, Color Cosmetics. I've reviewed the foundation on my blog. And the lip balm itself, it's very silky, no color. It's not very thick, but I like that. I think it's an excellent base for lipstick, but I also wear it at night before bed. I usually use this interchangeably 
with my By Terry Bomb Day Rose, which is a classic. I've gone through nearly this entire pot up to this point, and I will be picking up a new one soon enough. This is excellent when it's both dry and cold, and I like this one for when I'm just dealing with general dryness on my lips. Then I go ahead and apply some eye cream. I've been using a lot of the La Prairie Skin Caviar Luxe Eye Lift Cream. You can see there's quite a dent that's been made. My mom loves this cream as well. She recently picked up a full jar for herself. And I just use the tiniest bit. It is an investment in terms of skincare and cost, but so worth it. And everyone I know who uses this cream loves it as much. I just put some on my fingertips and press it into my eyes. You don't want to ever rub too much on your eyes. And one thing I failed to mention, I do have mascara, residual mascara from earlier on today. The formula, which I'll discuss later on today, is so stalwart and formidable that it just doesn't move. And I thought it would be more work than it was worth to remove it simply to apply it again. So yes, I'm still wearing mascara from like 7 this morning. On to the next layer. I always apply a healthy dose of the La Mette de Beauté Peau Vierge in shade 2. I've been using this for years. I don't even want to think about what would happen if this were discontinued. I adore this formula. It is a highlighter, illuminator, primer, moisturizer, and anti-aging treatment all in one. And it is tinted, as you can see, but the tint is so light as to not truly act as a foundation. Though if you have incredible skin, you could probably just get away with this. Or, as I like to use it as a base under foundation, it just gives a slight sheen. I apply it all over my face, and I just love how it makes my skin look. The fact that it also has retinol for further anti-aging benefits is just a bonus. And good news, the retinol is great for even those of us with very sensitive skin. It's suspended in a formula that allows for very gradual you never get peely or dry feeling on your face you never get that retinal effect which is genius directly after applying Peau Verge I like to use just a dot of the By Terry Donsilis primer well I did mention that the Peau Verge acts as a primer I prefer a little more primer and this one is just magnificent just the tiniest amount across my T-zone. It really mitigates shine throughout the day. It also fills in any obvious pores you may have. And it locks the makeup into an area of your face where makeup may be tempted to kind of slide around. So this primer is a beautiful option. Once again, great for all skin types and ages of skin. My mom loves it as passionately as I do. On to foundation. I typically toss my hair into kind of a freestanding bun. I have a lot of hair and I don't want it to get in the way. I am going to be working with the Astolift Light Analyzing Moisture Foundation. I found this on eBay. I will link to the seller that at least I found because this is kind of difficult to procure, but I absolutely adore this formula. I know I talk about foundation a lot. There are many formulas I love, from Zellens to Tom Ford to Sensai and Shuamura to Suku. I do love my foundations, and this one has joined the ranks of some of my top favorites. I wear it in shade Caramel, and the light analyzing formula is intended to kind of balance the skin in any light setting or situation, from a flash photography moment to just intense natural sunlight to fluorescent light to indoor lighting and just adjust with that setting to make your skin look its best. Caramel is great for NC 25 to 27 skin and so that is the shade I'll be using today. I usually just use a pump and a half maybe and then I'm going to buff it on with a semi damp beauty blend. So I'm just buffing it into my face. You can see that it already just evens everything out and this particular foundation offers medium to full cover. Now I'm going to go ahead and put a bit of concealer on any dark areas instead of adding more foundation, which I think would ruin the beautiful skin effect of this formula. I'm just going to use a retractable lip brush from Sephora. I have some Laura Mercier Secret Camouflage in SC3 on the tip already preloaded. It's always in my makeup bag. I do find the Secret Camouflage, which I have worn for years on end, decades really, is such an excellent coverage product if you have a dark spot or a blemish or the aftermath of a blemish it just takes care of things beautifully it's very potent i don't recommend using it under the eyes but it's great for any areas where you just want pure coverage and 
for it to stay there all day long. It doesn't melt off or migrate. On to the next part of my base. In this case, I'm going to do a light contouring. In the mornings, when I'm in a rush, it's not particularly realistic for me to do a serious contouring job, but I do like to just kind of get that shadowing and shape to the face as well as some highlighting. So I'm working with the Becca Low Lighting Highlighting Compact right now. And this is a cream like the Tom Ford, but I do think that it has a slightly different effect, maybe a little more subtle. You do have to build it up to get an obvious kind of contour, and I like that because you can't really overdo it if you're in, the, in a rush in the morning. I've already put some of the low lighting portion on the brush, and I'm just going to brush it into the hollows of my cheeks right now. And you can see it's already building a nice shadow. It's very realistic. I think it would complement a variety of skin tones. You can build this up for greater effect. I'm probably going to leave it fairly natural right now. I do bring some across my lower jawline. And a little more on my nose. I'm going to be wildly imprecise here using the same brush instead of a tiny brush because I just want to create some subtle contour, some shadowing, but I don't need like a line in this case. Up on the forehead area, I'm just bringing it across here like so. And that will basically do I'm going it. to use the Charlotte Tilbury Cheek to Cheek Swish and Pop Blusher in the shade First Love, which is a favorite. I've been using it since the summer. And First Love is the lightest shade. It's kind of a bronzy peach nude, and it looks incredibly light in the compact, but on the face, it does add a reasonable amount of I'm color. using my Cosette Cheek Brush, which is a favorite for blush. I just kind of get a little bit of all the shades, kind of dust it off, and then bring it onto the cheek like this. You can see that it adds some depth. It doesn't completely compromise the dewy skin finish of the contour, but it will set it there nicely. One other cheek product that I really like using when I'm not into using a full-on contour, like with the Becca, is the Lamette de Beauté Cheeky Chic Kaleidoscope Face Kit. And this has four layers of cheek color, there's a bottom layer, which is a kind of champagne gold cream. It's so pretty as a highlighter, and all of these powders are finely milled, so they just become one with the face and look really natural. Then there is this kind of nude bronze rose shade. It's dusty, and it is neutral. So these last two shades, the coral and the pink, are bright but they have a great white base so that they're matte, but they stay color fast on the cheeks to offer kind of a fresh pop of color that never deepens, darkens, or oxidizes. And I think that's what makes these colors so unique. Otherwise, they could be a little bit intimidating as bold shades, but they just bring the most gorgeous flush to the cheeks, almost like a doll-like effect. And so this is almost always in my purse as either a touch-up or as my main cheek product when I'm not using the other products I mentioned. Basically, I run some concealer underneath my eyes right off the bat before I get into eyeshadow and mascara. In this case, I'm going to be working with the Ciroc Beauty Surrealist Skin Concealer. I also use a lot of the By Terry Dawn Concealer in shade 3. This is shade 5 in the Ciroc. And I find that when I have more time, this is great because it's a liquid and I want to just be careful and not over apply where it's, and this is a cream stick, which has a great skin finish as well. And so when I'm in a super hurry as I am feigning to be right now, then I go ahead and use the Ciroc because it just stays in place. So I'm going to just put some in my under eye region right now. And the skin finish on this is superb. Next is eyeshadow. Now, I am all about a neutral eye. I use a lot of Tom Ford Spice, which is still available even though it's a limited edition. And then I use a lot of the NARS Himalaya, a lot of the NARS Himalaya. As you can see, I've made a fairly hideous dent in this. Anyway, I love these shades and they're always in my makeup bag for when I need to touch up or just transform my look. Today, I'm going to be working with another newer neutral in my life that I've been using every day since getting it and that is the Hourglass Modernist Eye Palette in the shade Infinity. Using a Hakuhodo 
eyeshadow brush to apply and I like to use the same brush for all all colors I know that's likely gauche but that's what I like to do I'm going to go ahead and just take some of the warmer medium taupe brown and put it on my brush here's what I found with these shadows and there's been a lot of discussion I find that they are very soft that doesn't bother me in fact I think it makes for a really lovely application and I find it just looks like velvet on the lids. It's so pretty. I'm going to take a little bit of the more neutral taupe, mix it with the warmer taupe, and bring some under the eye region. I know it needs to be blended. I'm just, this is what I do in the morning. Put it on, and I'm putting it just above where the concealer is resting. There will be a reason for that in a moment. Then to add a little dimension, I'll use the darker color of brown and I'm just going to bring it in the crease and kind of rub it in quickly. Truly, I've done this in the car more times than I'd like to think about. And moving this through on this side. Now I have kind of a nice neutral brown. I'm going to use the white shade and bring it up across my brow like this. To highlight the frame of the brows and I can bring some underneath. To blend it out, add some content. Take a multi blending brush to clean up the under eye region like this. And now I'm taking the concealer that I've already put there, cleaning away any errant shadow and also defining that lower lash line. So you can see before the blending and after. It's cleaned up, it looks much more precise. Truly, I don't know how you could not adore this palette if you are a lover of warm neutrals because the color combination here is superb. To the eyebrows, I am going to be working with the Surratt Expressionist Brow Pencil. It's refillable. I wear it in shade Brunette. I know I've discussed it before. And all I really do, I have a natural brow affinity. I basically leave my brows alone with the exception of cleaning up up here and a little bit underneath. Now if I want, I can use the other side, which has a spoolie, to just kind of brush them up. And I like the fact that this one mechanism has both options. Additionally, if I'm feeling extra fancy, I use some By Terry Eyebrow Mascara in shade 4, which is dark brown. To add even more hold to the brow, I can just brush up and give my brows great hold for the day. It just adds polish and continuity to what I've already done with the Surratt. And now my brows are completely in place for hours right. and For mascara, I'm going to be working with the Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. I picked this up on a whim at the drugstore. I was there for, of course, other things. And truly, I was just entranced by the nude, pinky, purple, slightly foil tube. It was aesthetically pleasing. And I was like, oh, I'll give this a go. Fortunately, the reviews on this were also as beautiful as the tube, and the formula is amazing. It's got a curved brush. You can go this way or this way with application, and I like to do a little bulk. Of course, I do have existing on. It's great for sensitive eyes, contact wearers like I am. It doesn't smudge or fall out as the day goes on, and it's up there with my Surratt Releve Mascara and my Chanel Le Volume, both of which I adore. So I'm just going to add a little bit more on for effect. I love how long and thick this makes your lashes look. You definitely look like you're wearing mascara, but sometimes I prefer that look. Lately, I've been using an eyelash curler more often than not. This is the Surratt Eyelash Curler. Oh my goodness, it is my favorite of all the curlers in my possession. It's delicate, it's beautiful visually speaking, but the results are just magnificent. It gives such lift to the lashes and it does it in a gentle way. So I just slip my lashes in here and I'm going to pinch once. And you can see that opening effect. Her lips have been really pleased with the Charlotte Tilbury Lip Cheat Lip Pencil in Pillow Talk. It is a beautiful pinky nude and I have already put some on just because it's really hard to talk and put lip liner on with any sense of accuracy. But I just wanted to trace this outer area here because you can see that's where I go a little bit above my lip line. Otherwise, it's a fairly natural application. I like the fact that you can just fill in your lips and this formula does not budge once it's applied, which makes it great as a base for nudes, which of course I am always juggling. To talk about right now since this is kind of my everyday routine lately. Here's five. I always have the By Terry Lady Bear in my purse. 
It is a neutral medium beige. It doesn't wash you out. I've talked about that before. I also have the Surat Beauty Lip Sleek and Fisua, another undying favorite. I will link to my review of it on the blog below. And it's just a pale pinky peach coral that even though it has some shimmer, is flattering to every skin tone imaginable. Then there is the Anastasia Liquid Lip Color in Pure Hollywood. I picked this up last week and I love it. I will link to my swatch and review of it as well, but it's a great nude, a little lighter than the By Terra. And I'm gonna focus on applying these two shades. These are the Laura Mercier Paint Wash Liquid Lip Colors in Petal Pink and Golden Pea. Pink shade is very pigmented. Just look at that. Boom. I'm gonna blend it in. It's not drying whatsoever, which I think is interesting for a creamy, almost matte shade. Then I'm going to add some of the Golden Peach to the center of the lip for some volume. And whereas Petal Pink doesn't have any shimmer, Golden Peach clearly does, but I, I love the effect. I don't think it's too much, and sometimes I just like wearing Golden Peach on its own. I will link to my review of that as my well. final run out the door, I always think of two things, powder and perfume or fragrance. So the fragrance I've been grabbing a lot is one, a little atomizer from Scentbird, which is a great way to sample high-end fragrances on a monthly basis. It's a subscription service. And the, shit, the fragrance I've been loving is the Tom Ford Violet Blonde, which is green, it's cool, it's violet, it's sweet, and it has a dry down that's very musky. All notes that I adore. I'm really fond of violet. And so because this is so potent, I just give myself one spritz here, blend a little more into the neck, and I'm good to go. And like I said, this is a great way if you like atomizers, and I'm a huge fan, um, then this is a great option for kind of amassing a wide collection of fragrances all in atomizer format. With regards to powder, typically with the Astolip foundation, I don't powder it right after applying because I like the finish so much, but I do keep some powder with me. Lately, I've been gravitating towards the Burberry Sheer Foundation in Trench Number no. 6, which is a good match for NC25 skin looks like this and I've made quite a dent in its otherwise lovely plaid embossment and this has some coverage so I put it on very lightly when I do and really I only put it in areas where I think shine is going to be an issue. Tip of the nose, right in here, it has a great skin finish. And so concludes my get ready with me daily morning routine video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this whole process and discussion and I welcome your questions and your comments about any of the products I've discussed today. As always, please don't forget to visit me in my beauty blog, Beauty Professor, which can be found at www.beautyprofessor.net. Take care.